Reflecting on my early days, I remember grappling with every new technology, every new methodology that came my way, eager to build, eager to deploy, eager to optimize within the cloud computing universe. My journey was filled with both triumphs and setbacks. But today, I want to share those insights with you, specifically for those of you keen on transitioning into the cloud solutions architect role, or, you know, maybe you're just simply curious about what truly changes as one climbs up the experience ladder in cloud industries. By the way, this video is crafted from my own personal adventures and misadventures uh, in cloud solutions architecture. But the aim is to provide, is to guide, is to inspire, and, you know, maybe, why not, even spare you some of the growing pains along your own professional path. So let's get right into this. This is five key shifts in my approach as a senior solutions architect. And we're about to deep dive into not just how technical skills evolve, but also how our approach towards collaboration, problem solving, leadership, and continuous learning as well need to adapt for success in this thrilling yet challenging role coming at you right after the break. It was a big mind shift for me when I realized that my job is not just about designing solutions. Each line of code, each architecture, each decision, each deployment, and each optimization has the potential to bring smiles, felicitate growth, and transform many, many, many businesses. I remember times when an optimization somewhere in the system led to faster load times for a customer's website. But it wasn't just the application that sped up. It was the customer's business that accelerated. It was their customers who were happier. That's the kind of impact I want you to think about when you're designing solutions. That's the kind of impact, after all, I strive for every day. And I still catch myself sometimes so focused on the technical aspects of my work that I lose sight of the bigger picture. You know, it's a learning process, but the goal for me is clear. Focus on the experience that my solutions create for the end users, for the developers, for the business stakeholders. I believe it's in my nature to be a firefighter. You know, if, if I see a problem, I'll just run towards it and I'll try to fix it. Maybe you'll recognize yourselves in this as well. But this approach of see a problem, solve a problem, doesn't scale well when you're dealing with complex systems and large teams. You see, time and many failures along the way taught me that it's more important to take a step back and think about the strategic implications of the problem. What are the root causes? What are the long-term implications? What are the trade-offs? What are the risks? Then, and only then, I can start thinking about the tactical fixes. Now, this shift in mindset has helped me to be, um, I believe, more effective in my role. It's about playing chess, not checkers. In those early days, solitude was my workspace of choice. I used to believe that working independently would streamline efficiency. I used to believe that meetings were a waste of time. Well, okay, some of them are still a waste of time, but you know, as projects grew in complexity, I came to realize how the success of large-scale deployments depended heavily on collaborative efforts across multiple teams, multiple stakeholders, and that realization hit me hard. Technical skins alone won't cut it. Sharing visions, addressing concerns openly, and keeping everyone aligned became key ingredients for successful projects completion. And I had to adapt to this new reality. You know, I had to learn to communicate effectively. I had to learn to listen, to understand, and also to be understood, right? In essence, I had to learn to collaborate. One tool I found particularly useful in this journey was the art of storytelling. I learned to tell stories that would resonate with my audience. And you might be thinking, well, you know, what we do is highly technical. How can storytelling help? After all, we're not talking about once upon a time, there was a boy, no, we're not doing this. But it actually does. If I'm going to convince a business to adopt a new technology, let's say drop VMware and leverage serverless, 
Well, I need to tell them a story about how this shift will make their lives easier by reducing operational overhead. How it will make their work more impactful by allowing them to focus on their core business. How it will make them more successful by reducing costs and uh, increasing agility. You know, if I'm going to convince a business stakeholder to invest in a new project, I need to tell them a story about how this will help them achieve their business goals, how it will make their customers happy, how it will make them more successful. If I'm going to preach microservices to a team of developers, I need to tell them a story about the pain points they're experiencing today and how microservices can help them overcome those challenges. By the way, I dedicated two modules in SA Magic to effective presentations and driving adoption using storytelling because this is a powerful tool and I'm still learning it, but I believe I am getting better at it. I used to think of security and compliance as a checkbox item, you know, something you just add at the end of the project, you know, just before going live, um, I mean, yes, at least they were always on the list, but they weren't always at the top of the list. As I grew in my career, I came to realize that security is not just a feature. It's actually a mindset. It's not just a checkbox. It's actually a culture. It's not just a phase. It's actually a journey. Nowadays, you'll find me involving security specialists from the get-go, going for a security-first approach to ensure that the design, the deployment, and the operations are as robust as they can get against threats. How I think about security has also changed. I think about it in terms of risk management. I think about it in terms of business continuity. I think about it in terms of customer trust. And I think about it in terms of compliance and legal uh, implications. If you're in an organization that's used to first building workloads, then having security teams review them, you know, review them before shipping, well, I'm sure you're then aware of the challenges that come with that approach because security becomes a bottleneck. It becomes a blocker to innovation. You know, I've been there and I've learned that it's not the right approach at all. Security needs to be part of the design, of the development, part of the deployment, part of the operations. It needs to be part of the culture. So it's not a blocker anymore. Instead, it becomes an enabler. Okay, this is a funny one. Early in my career, I used to think that the cloud was all about scalability and elasticity. And I think I was right, but I also think that I was missing a big piece of the puzzle, cost optimization. You know, I used to think that if I could just scale up and down, then I was good. But you know, I was wrong. Uh, I used to think that if I could just leverage managed services, I was good. But again, I was wrong. Cost was consideration then but it was never a driving force. You know, it was an afterthought. It, it was never a priority. Now, cost is front and center. I think about cost when I design, when I deploy, when I optimize. I think about cost when I choose a service, when uh, I choose a region, when I choose a database. I think about it when I choose a storage solution. I think about cost when I choose a cloud provider, when I choose a pricing model, when I choose a support plan. You know, it's there in every decision I make. And believe me, it's not just about saving money. It's about being responsible. It's about being efficient with resources. Um, it's also about being sustainable. It's also about being competitive, right? So I did it the only way I know how. I learned. I just jumped headfirst in the FinOps world and tried to learn as much as I could about the different pricing modules, different cost drivers, different optimization techniques. And because teaching is also a great way to learn, I compiled all that knowledge into a course I call FinOps Guru, where I distill all of that complex knowledge into simple, actionable steps like this mind map. You know how I love mind maps. So this mind map contains a list of FinOps vocabulary that you can download for free. By the way, link in the description. Okay, I know I promised five things, but if you're still watching, then probably you'd appreciate it if I throw in another one, right? Okay, let's do it. Just a quick reminder to give the video a thumbs up if you are still watching, and let's get right into another concert through this entire journey. The never-ending pursuit of knowledge. Climbing up the ladder doesn't mean putting learning on pause. 
In fact, you know, it's, it's quite the opposite. The more I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know, and that's a good thing, right? It keeps one curious, it keeps you humble, it keeps you hungry for more. But, yes, there's always a but, my days are no longer consumed with trying to absorb every technical detail and every coding practice I could lay my hands on. You know, those were the old days when I, it was all about mastering all the tools and all the technologies. Today, while technical skills remain crucial, I'm learning more about strategic thinking, about leading projects. You know, it's not just about knowing how to do things anymore. It's about knowing what needs to be done and also why. And this evolution from being a mere participant in projects to steering them towards meeting broader business goals has been both challenging and rewarding to say the least. Okay, as we've journeyed together through these six pivotal shifts in how I approach my role as a senior solutions architect today, you know, compared to my beginnings, it's clear that the essence of this transformation boils down to growth, both technically and personally. The technical prowess you start with is crucial. But equally important are the leadership, strategic thinking, collaboration skills, and continuous learning mindset you develop along the way. So to all aspiring cloud architects out there, remember that this evolution from doing to delegating, from learning to leading, it doesn't happen overnight. It's a gradual process filled with endless learning opportunities, filled with challenges that tests your mettle and push you beyond your comfort zone. But, you know, with dedication, openness to adapt as the technology landscape evolves, achieving such growth is not just possible, I believe it's inevitable. So I encourage you to keep pushing boundaries within yourselves and never stop being curious about new ways to solve problems, new ways to create impactful cloud solutions, you know, whether you're just starting or whether you're looking for ways to elevate your career further in cloud computing fields, know that every experience shapes you into a more competent architect prepared for tomorrow's challenges. And now, I turn it over to you. Subscribe for more insightful guidance on becoming successful architects within the expansive domain of cloud computing. Share your experiences, please. Uh, share your aspirations in transitioning into advanced technological roles uh, in the comments below. I'm really eager to hear about where you're at in your journey or any questions you might have. Again, thank you very much for watching and here's to crafting not just solutions, but experiences that invariably lead us towards becoming better versions of ourselves, both professionally and beyond. My name is Elias. See you in the next one. Peace out.